Hi, this video will be to show doing corners and borders when you do not have the go borders and corners. So if you have beginnings or just pro, then this is how you will do that. So we'll do select and sew. And these are designs that are from One Song Needle Arch that we're using. So this is the corner pattern right there. So we're going to open it. And of our choices of placement methods, we want the one point. And we're going to open up the toolbox and go down to the marking tool. We're going to be marking our border to reflect on the screen. So I have chosen to have um, the design hit one half inch from the raw edge. And what you're deciding is, um, and you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this. Those are my flip things. Cause I want that in the top left corner. So take it back to marking tool. I have to decide where in my border do I want this leftmost stitch and up at the top, where do I want the topmost stitch to hit? So that's why I have this one half inch. A quarter inch would be where the, where the binding will be. And then I want it a quarter inch away from that binding. And then same for over here. I want a quarter inch away um, from the from the seam. So um, that's once I start stitching the, um, the, the, the pantograph that connects the corners. So, um, so I need to mark this to reflect on my screen. So now that I've got the marking tool selected, I'm going to move my needle over the line that I went ahead and drew to make it easy. And I'm going to say add. And that adds a little tiny brown dot over here. It's kind of hard to see it. And then I'm going to move my needle up over the intersection of this um, top half inch line and this left um, half inch line. And when I get my needle exactly over it, then I will touch add again. So now I have that line. And now I'm going to move the needle all the way across to the top corner on the other side. And again, I've already made my marks there. So I'm moving my needle exactly over that. I'm gonna say add, and then I will come down. And it's just an arbitrary spot that, um, that I've chosen to come down. What I wanna do is clear where the corner would stitch to. I want to at least go past that point. So um, now I want to do the this inner, inner marking right there for the other side there. And so now I don't want this to connect, so I need to add. So I'm going to say add marking. I have to give it a name. I'm just going to give it two. And now I'm ready to move my needle. And now I'm a quarter inch away from that seam line. And I'm going to say add. And then I'm going to move it up here. And get it over that intersection and say add. Now we're moving it across. And get my needle over that intersection and say add. And then bring it down and say add. So now I have this um, diagram on my screen that reflects the um, actual border of my quilt. So now I need to adjust this so that it will fit between those lines. So I move my needle up here over that intersection and then I'm just going to leave my machine here and right now this um, node is gray, meaning this has not been placed. So I'm going to touch it and it turns green. But you can see it does not at all fit. So I go back into placements and now I can use these icons to decrease the size. And as long as this yellow lock is, is shut, I can use either these going across or those going up and down. Um, but I'm going to use the one with the arrows pointing in to make it smaller. So it looks like I need to make it a lot small. 
and then once I've got it a lot smaller, I can just retouch that that um, node, and it's still too small, so we need to shrink it some more. And by me just leaving my needle over that same spot, um, that's how I just keep touching that um, that node. So now it's getting really close. And if I want to see it better, I can touch this magnifying glass up here. And now I can really see I still need to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, we'll touch that gray node again. Oh, I got it too small. So now we'll grow it a little bit. It's a little bit more. And... So there it's touching the line and there it's not, but we're talking a very incremental amount. So I think I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to touch fit and now we're back. At this point, you may want to write down the width and the height. And the reason you'll need the width, we'll, we'll see once we get ready to quilt this in the other corner, because to get this node placed, we'll have to measure that 4.6 down from the corner over there. Um, with some patterns, you're able to use um, this center node, which works just like the other one. You don't have to touch both. You can choose one or the other. And, and sometimes it works so that whatever your distance from this seam, which in this case it was a quarter inch, Sometimes you're able to come over here and measure a quarter inch down and touch that center node, but you'll just have to look and, and see how that that um, that green center node there, where it's um, hitting as far as where it's going to go over there. So um, sometimes it's going to be easier to, to use this node, and sometimes it'll be just as easy to use that one. So... All of your corner patterns are different, so I, I can't tell you to use one over the other. So it'll be a judgment call there. So now that we have this um, nicely fitted into the corner, we're ready to quilt it. So we're going to hit quilt. The first thing we want to do when we get into the quilt screen is go into settings. And I have this set for slow and a tie off count of three. This is the toggle there of whether you want micro stitches or back and forth. Um, I have the auto automatic bobbin pull off. Um, you're able to choose when you get to that point anyway, if you want to do, do that. Um, and then your stitches per inch, you can plus or minus. And so it's set for 12. And we will want to use that same stitches per inch when we're in the pantograph screen. So we're going to say, okay. And if we want to trace it, we can trace it and just make sure of how it's going to hit. The needle is up. So at this point, I just want to watch and, and make sure it's going right over that, that line, and it is. So I think I'm happy with, um, with where it's going to hit, so I'm going to hit stop. And at this point, I'm ready to pull the bobbin. And the needle is up. And I'm doing my single stitch. And touching sew. So we'll be back when this has finished stitching. So it's finished stitching and now I'm ready to pull the bobbin. There's a five second delay here. So, um, and I'm gonna say move away. And the needle is up. And the reason I'm choosing move away and move back is because this is within my quilt top and it's not off the edge. So I want this to go exactly back to where the stitching ended. And this is my way to do that. So now I say single stitch. And I'm going to say release carriage so I can pull it up. I want to leave myself some tails so that I can bury these later. So I've got myself a good tail there. And I want to be sure and clip the bobbin one that's pulling freely. So I did that. Okay, so now I have this this um, 
these two beginning and ending spots. And we're going to say back. And we're going to say finished, back to pattern placement. And now we need to flip it. So we're going to flip it so we can put it over in the other corner. So I'm moving my needle um, to where it will be 4.6 inches um, from my corner spot. So if I lay this right here, then 4.6 is going to be somewhere right in here. So I'm going to make a little mark there. I may have to adjust it a little bit, so we'll see see how this works. And when you're doing things like this, you want to make sure you're not leaning on your front bar because that can move things around a little bit. So now we're going to touch this, and we're going to do that. So it looks like I need to shift it down just a tiny bit. Maybe a tiny bit more. So you just have to... Um, Play around with it a little bit till you're happy with where it's at. Okay, we're going to go with that. We're going to go with that. Because we're talking just very, very tiny increments there. So we're going to say quilt. We are ready to pull the bobbin. You want to pull, pull your both your threads so that they're a little snug feeling. Touch so, and we'll be back when this is finished. Okay, so we finished um, the upper left and the upper right corners, and we're back in the pattern placement screen, and I've written down the width and the height so that I will have those measurements to kind of go by when I'm in the bottom corners. Um, I'll quilt the interior of the quilt, and then once I get to the bottom, uh, it's when I'll be doing the two lower corners. So I just want to have these measurements since there's not a, a, sa a place to save this at this point. So we're going to X out and go into pantograph because now we want to connect the two. So the total height, um, I'm going to go ahead and touch that. And the height will be the distance between for me since i um, used a half inch from the raw edge and a quarter inch there so this is two and a half inches so that's going to be my height in the pen in the pantograph screen here so i'm going to say 2.5 okay so now i've got that we need to enter the width which will be the distance between um where this stitching began and and where it um, began or ended over there. Um, and so we'll go into the yellow ruler and we want this one. And I'm going to move my needle exact, exact as I can over, over this stitching. And I will touch right there. And this says quilt width. So you'll see that up at the top. And I'm moving my needle exactly over over where this stitching ended or began. I used variegated thread. It's kind of hard to tell. Okay. Right there. And I'll touch there. So now that gives me the width. And I will say apply measurement. And I'm going to go ahead and touch options because I want to see my grid line. So I'm going to say okay. And I need to select my pattern, which this is the one that matches with that. So I'll say open. And now I need to start increasing them. And I can see right away there. this is a pattern that's not connecting, so I need to change the hearts. If I were to do the second one down, it would wrap them, and I certainly don't want that. So, um, And then at this point... You can either um, kind of visualize how you want that to look, or you could um, try to measure it. So if I measure the this leaf um, from its tip there to right there, that's two and a half, so that's a square. So I want to keep adding patterns until that pattern width 
becomes more um, more like two and a half. So we're at 2.6. So 2.501, that's really close. So this is what I want to use right there. So um, now I'm ready to quilt this and I will say place as a single pattern. And I don't want to use one point, so I'm going to tab down to two points and I want to use stretch because I want it to to totally fit between the, the two beginning and ending stitches. So to set my node, I'm gonna, my first node there on the left, I'm gonna move my needle is right over that because I really want that one to be exact because that's where the stitch, I'm telling the stitching to pick up at. And then, yeah. And again, I want to come over here and I want to move my needle exactly over that spot and touch that node. So now it's, it's ready to stitch. So we'll say quilt. And then I can tell that it, it's, it's looking like it's going to stitch pretty much between these markings. So, um, if I hit trace, I'll be able to just see if it's um, going to start exactly over that spot. So yeah, the needle's up. So that looked like it's going to work. And now I could say trace from end. Sometimes it's safe to do a trace that way, just so you know that everything is good. Okay, I think it's going to end where it needs to end. So I'm going to say stop. And I'm going to say pull bobbin. So we'll say so. Okay, so we'll be back when this, this border has finished stitching. So the, the top border has now stitched and I've pulled the bobbin and hidden the tails and I'm gonna say finish back to pattern placement. So at this point, I'm going to X back out and I'm back in the pantograph screen and I wanna save this because I can use this same amount down at the bottom. So I'm going to touch that. And let's see, I'm going to go into my Pantos folder and my working Pantos. And I'm going to say rope border, enter, save. And now I'll be able to pull that up when we get to the very bottom. And all okay, so the all the interior of the of the quilt has now been quilted, and we're ready to do the bottom corners and the border that attaches them. The safe area has already been set, so we're going to go into select and sew, and pick the corner that we used up at the top, and we're going to open it. And now we need to draw our marking lines. So we're going to go into the toolbox and select marking tool. And I just want to show that um, if you don't want to mark on your quilt, you actually could use, like this is really thin. You can, this was free, um, but you can get these little thin things at the dollar store. But you're able to, to literally move your foot right on top, and that makes it be really easy to see. So um, I already have this mark, so I'm going to go by those markings. But I did want to show that just so that you know, don't, don't think you have to mark on your quilt when you can use these little thin, skinny rulers. And I've got, I moved that needle over the intersection. This was my half inch uh, from, the, from the raw edge for the quarter inch for the binding, plus I wanted the leftmost and bottommost stitches to be a quarter inch away from the, um, from the binding. So now I'm gonna go all the way across to the intersection down here at the bottom, add, I'm going to go up, and I 
didn't draw my line very far. I'm going to say add. And now I need to do the, um, the, second, the second part. And so we're going to say add marking. We'll call it two, enter. And now um, I can just actually use my foot at this point. I didn't draw that up very high, but this is a quarter inch. So I can just say add there. And then add there. Add there, and then add. So now we have our border reflected on, on the screen. And if you'll remember, when we were doing um, um, this in the upper corners, I, I wrote down what the width and height was. I, I really should have started that when I was in the top left corner. But this, this came from the top right, but they're, they're close enough, so it doesn't matter. So to make this easy, um, now that I'm here at the bottom, because I have, um, I have one point selected for the, for the placements. I have one point, and the, the whole thing with margins can get tricky with, um, with which selection you make. And I have one point, which means I can go by this node or I can go by that node. I can choose either one. And there may be um, patterns where that, that corner, I'm sorry, that center one works better for you. This one, it really doesn't because um, it's just kind of hard to deal with. But um, So I, I have the one point selected and I need to flip it. So always be aware of the orientation of your corners and your border when you're doing these. And um, so these were my measurements from um, this one. I wrote it down from the top right. So now I have this. And and I had a width of 4.6 and a height of 4.5. So um, I'm going to unlock this. And now I can um, make these measurements be independent of each other. And so for the for the width, I'm going to make this be um, 4.6. I'm going to select the show pattern size. So it's in very pale purple um, print up there. Um, but I'm going to bring it down to um, being 4.6. And I guess I could probably type it in. That would probably be much easier, 4.6. And then the height, it had 4.5. And then I could do that, but because I have the little um, the lock unlocked, so um, so right now, and that says four point five nine eight, which that's four point six and four point five zero four. So it's it's um, it's got them um, very close there um, to my measurements. And now I'm going to go over here, and and for the height from this intersection, I measured up. 4.5 inches in height. So I'm going to move my needle over that 4.5 and I'm going to touch that gray node right there. And this looks good. I'm going to turn that on so we can see better. And, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but I think this looks really good. So take that back off. And I'm actually ready to quilt this now. So um, I'm going to go into quilt, and of course I could trace, but I'm feeling very bold. I'm going to go ahead and move my needle down here. I can see by that green circle there that's somewhere where it's going to start, and I'm going to say pull bobbin. Okay, so we're going to get this, um, this um, corner here stitched out, and then we'll be back. Okay, so the lower left corner has now, um, corner has now stitched, and I I've buried the thread tails and we're ready to do the lower right corner and we will flip the design so I'm going to go ahead and flip that so I don't forget and now it gets a little tricky over in this lower right corner because this green node has to be placed somewhere in there and probably this should be a 
a perfect square number, like they should both be 4.6 or 4.5, but a little bit of the wonkiness and how I put the, the quilt together um, accounted for that up there in the top corner when I first um, determined those numbers. So I have a set of these square rulers. So I'm going to use this one. Um, it's a four and a half inch square. And I'm putting the lower corner there where the um, intersection of those of the lines I have, that, that half inch line I drew in. And I made a dot at the top corner right there. Okay. So I'm going to put my needle over that dot. And it may or may not be exact. So we'll see. We'll blow it up so we can see better. And it looks like I should shift my needle up just a tiny little bit. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go with this. We're gonna go with this. So I'm ready to quilt this. I will pull the bobbin and get this quilted, and we'll be back. Okay, so the bottom right corner has now been stitched, and we're ready to say finished and back to pattern placement. And at this point, we'll take that back down. At this point, we're ready to pull up the pantograph um, that we saved from the top. So we need to X out of this. And we need to go into pantograph. And we need to select that pattern that we saved, which I put it in my panos and my working. And I believe we called it rope border. So there it is, rope border. So we're going to open that and open it as a pantograph. Okay, so this is a rope, and this is how it looked across the top, which it was, was fine. But I want it to look like the rope is continuing all the way around. So because I'm at the bottom, I actually want to flip it. So I'm going to choose flip and do this. So now it's flipped the other way. So I think that will be a good thing. And we are going to place it as a single pattern. And we want to select two points because we want both those points. Uh, we want to give it both those points. And we want to say stretch down there. So now I need to move my needle over this ending point right there. And... I want to be really exact. If I wanted to be really, really exact, um, I, and I really, really cared about how accurate it was, I would take my needle, I would go back there, and I would let my needle, um, I would turn it so that the point of my needle was a lot closer, and I could be even more exact. But um, this, I don't have to be, this quilt, I don't have to be quite as exact. So I've got that point selected. And I, I put a dot there so I would do a better job of, um, so. Okay. And we'll blow it up. And I'm okay that it's going to um, go down a little bit closer toward the uh, binding. Um it'll 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 hit a quarter inch away from from that yellow border so i'm i'm good with that and like i said this isn't one i'm trying to be overly accurate with i just wanted to quickly give you uh instruction on how to do this so um hopefully that's what i've done and now uh we will say so and uh, we'll pull the bobbin and after we get this done, we'll be back to show um, how we're going to do the borders down the sides. Okay, so the quilt has been taken off the rails. And, and what you see right here was the left side of the quilt. And this is just what I do. Um, I'm not saying you have to do it. It's what I do. Um, I'm measuring two inches because that's the space, um, the most space that I have. So I've laid this long ruler so that um, this line is on the raw edge and I'm going to draw a line. Just really quickly draw a line. And I'm gonna do that um, the rest of the way down. And the reason I'm doing that is because this using this selvage may or may not give me a straight edge to pin to. 
and I want my quilt when I load it to be parallel with the rails. So by me measuring um, and drawing this line that's going to be two inches away from here, this gives me a a pin line to go to that will keep me parallel with the rail. So I'm going to finish um, drawing this line and then I will get it pinned on and we'll be back. Um, I have I have rotated the quilt on the frame and the line that I drew was what I used for the pin line. So now this is this is loaded um, parallel on the rails again and I know so because of, of drawing that line and I'm just using clamps on the front and I'm um, I'm just floating floating the rest of the quilt here. Um, so now I need to I need to get rid of these markings because they don't they don't match anymore. So um, I'm going to go into the toolbox and marking tool and say remove all. Yes, I'm sure. And now I'm going to need a few more of of these. Um, so we're going to go ahead and and go back to the um, to the panto stacker screen and I need to redo the width okay so when I look at this I had a um, two and a half width and a two and a half height so the height will stay the same but um, I need to um, I'm gonna need to add a few more rope things there and I'll have to do the 2.5 so let's go into the ruler and you know what? There's something else I need to do. I need to reset the safe area. So let's see. Set safe area. Okay, so I'm going to go up here to the top left. And okay. So now I can go into the ruler and set the width. And I'm going to put it right where the stitching um, ended there. That's there. And then where it ended over here. And then say apply measurement. Okay. Okay, so now we see that the pattern width is 2.9 and we need to say it we need it to say 2.5. So I'm going to increase this a few. Let's see. So we can either have it 2.48 or 2.58. So I think we're going to go for 2.48. So I'm going to resave it. So I'm going to touch the save rope border save. Do you wish to override it? Yes. Okay. So now we have it ready to quilt, I think, because we've got it oriented like we want it to orient. You kind of want to be aware of that. So we will say place as a single pattern. And we have selected the two-point stretch, so that's what we want. And I need to move this over. And the, the best thing for me to do would be to lower my needle so that I can see that the needle is exactly over that spot. I'm going to I'm going to wing it, but if you were doing it for a good quilt, I, I would say lower your needle close so that you can tell it really is um, pretty close to being over that point. That's that node. Okay. So now I should be ready to quilt. And and I could have made the markings again if I had wanted to, but um I'm I'm gonna go ahead into quilt and I'm gonna use trace this time. And trace really is the safest thing to do. Um because you really do want to know that um it's gonna start where you want it to start and end where you want it to end. And this corner is a bit wonky. It's not playing well with the actual uh, design. So um, 
I'm not going to sweat it at this point, but I will be very careful about using this again. And I want to trace from the end. So we're going to go with it. It may not be exact, but um, if I want it to be exact, I would, um, I would just stop it there at the end and, and lower my needle and just know that it was going to be exact. But... Um, this is a donation quilt, so I'm not going to stress. So at, at this at this point, um, I'm going to quilt, quilt this across now that I know the start and end point are where I want it to be. And then um, when, when this stitches, I'm going to unpin this and I'm going to draw a line um, along the other edge, just like I did this. Because I think if I were to try and advance it, I would still end up needing to pin the other side. So just for me, I would rather unpin this and then draw a line on the other side and, and pin to that line. And then redo what I'm doing here. Um, and, and then just always be aware of how you want your design oriented. And, and when you do your corners, that's, that's very important. Um, but apart from that, um, that's, that's how you do the borders and corners when you don't have gold.